So here I go making my first workbench, trying to make everything as functional and long lasting as possible. However, the idea at first was to make something good out of recycled hardwood and other things, spending as little money and using the time I had to make something useful. The idea for these first cuts were to have two wheels at one end of the bench and four feet on the other, but later on it'd be easy to decide that all the legs should have wheels, as the weight of the final product was very heavy something like 100 to 120 kilos. As for trying to make everything as square as possible, I'd say I did a pretty good job for only having an L square and an engineering triangle to work with. I was beginning the fabrication of the wheel backer spacer thingies to fit some wheels on and ended up fixing them later that day as well. In order to put all of the feet and wheels on, I flipped the whole assembly to easily access the bottom. I'm glad I had the help of my old man to flip it quite a bit as it got considerably heavy. I also decided that the bench needed to have some shelving to store slightly bigger stuff that couldn't fit in the drawers, so I fit shelves around the toolbox that was going to go into it. You may be asking, well, why didn't I utilise the whole other side of the bench? Well, to answer your question, that spot is um, a perfect fit for another off-the-shelf toolbox in the future. You may have noticed or not, but the wood on each end of the bench towards the feet. That wood I used isn't as strong as I thought, so I killed two birds with one stone and made reinforcements to strengthen those parts of the bench and designed them to easily mount the future two box that may go into that spot. But one thing I would get if I were to do a project like this again would be a bench saw and a drill press. Both things would make my life so much easier. The amount of things that I broke was Oh, too many. It was too many. And so I finally got a few coats of varnish over it to protect the wood and installed the end reinforcements I had mentioned earlier. In order to move this beastly thing around, I had to make a beastly handle for the weight of it. I had made this off camera, but unfortunately I was a little off measurement wise and had to trim the edges a little bit to have a nicer fit.
a few minutes later. As for painting a lot of the parts I'd made, I used my homegrown ghetto spray booth, which served as storage for all kinds of stuff. Two thousand years later. The main reason was that the beams were perfect height to hang stuff off. As for a time frame for making this, it took me about four working weeks to do everything. So about 160 hours of labour. Talk about an expensive work venture, right? I probably should have caught onto the whole weight problem when this happened, but I had to weld the feet to their partnering plates because when we flipped them, the weight caused the thread to snap off. I had also reinforced the mounting spots in the toolbox so that it was well supported when finally installed. Here I'm making the secret hidden mount for the second toolbox that might end up going in there. There was a few final coats of varnish I used, which I really liked. It was an oil based one, which really brought out the colour and, and the grain of all the timber I used on the project, and I would use it again if I could. The name of it was Carbethane Clear. Finally, I had mounted the toolbox permanently and it held up really well. However, I wanted to be extra sure, so I made some extra L brackets to mount it to. The handle and rag slash chemical holder I installed as well as the recycled piece of stainless to make it seem a little flash I think suited really well. But if not, maybe leave what you think in the comments below. So I finally realised that the whole bench needed to go on wheels. And so I went, taking off everything and preparing the wheels.
As for the thing that's popped, I still have no idea what that was. Maybe leftover glue or something? Heat it up and kaboom. I got no idea. I thought this job was going to be the easiest, but I was wrong. It was the hardest. I broke too many things that day. Not a good day for me. Rest in peace, six drill bits. I used some old metal strapping to try and distribute the weight evenly, which I thought turned out well. Over that I put 7mm thick plywood as a sponge in a way and put some old stain on it to protect it from the environment. And on top of that, I bought this stuff from my local hardware store. Didn't know what it was. I basically felt it, and I knew that would felt good, so I bought it. I don't regret that decision whatsoever because it looks great. Now I'm going to be using some wood based wood putty to fill in some of the gaps as unfortunately some of the timber was bowed and I didn't have the correct clamps to screw it down square. Now some of you may be confused while I'm doing this, but if I were to lose a small pin or something through one of those cracks it'd be really annoying to get out. Thus doing some hard yards in the future to prevent mishaps and frustration. Filling these gaps though took forever it felt like, Jesus. 
Now I'm going to be giving the wood a level of protection once again using some clear carbothane to bring out the grain and colour of the wood and seal all of this putty in once and for all. And there it is, done. I couldn't be much happier with how this turned out and I'm glad I did this. I should make life in the shed much easier. But of course, not only that, it's time to enjoy this with some tripoloski out in the shed 2am in the morning trying to weld something, I don't know. But I hope you guys enjoyed and please don't forget, if you think I earned it, leave a like and a subscription as it helps YouTube help me out. Much love guys, peace out.